Welcome to episode four of Interesting Kanji in Danzanru Jiu-Jitsu. In this episode, we'll be concentrating on kanji, which are derived from these five radicals, also known as bushu. The first kanji we'll be looking at is this one. And the bushu for this, or radical, is this character. This character means water. Now, oftentimes, when this radical is used, instead of actually showing this particular character, they will use these three dots, which go one, two, three. The stroke order looks like this. One, two, three, and then the remainder of the kanji is four, five, six, seven, eight, which goes to there, nine, which comes down and kicks up, and then 10. The onyomi is fu, and the kunyomi is uku, and again, when it's, when the Kana is in parentheses like that, it means that that can change, that ending can change depending on the usage. Well, what's the meaning of this kanji? The meaning is to float or to rise to the surface. A couple of usages we see in Danzanru. Uh, one here is the familiar ukiyotoshi. And then this is a passage from the Mokoroku, which talks about a boat. This is a boat, a fune, uh, floating. Here's the floating on top of the water. And here's the water. This, this means above or on top. Next, we'll look at this kanji. This is an interesting looking character. It has what it looked like to me as a fence here and it has a, uh, some dots on the bottom and it is made up of this radical or bushu which means fire this means fire oftentimes when the fire radical is used in a character it uses the four dots as we see here just like water used the three dots now we're using four dots for fire The stroke order of this character is as follows, one, two, then you draw the horizontal long line here, three, and then four, five, six, seven, and then put a floor on that with eight. And then the dots become nine, 10, 11, 12. So this is a 12 stroke character. The onyomi, the Chinese reading of this is mu, mu. And the kunyomi is nai, nai. The meaning of this is nothingness or nil is another way to, to say this. One uh, particular usage that we see in Danzanru and in other places in Japanese writing is this concept of munin muso. And we see the mu here and the mu here. No preconceived notions. Next we see this character and the bushu for this is this character, which literally means gold. However, oftentimes when used in, in character writing, it, may, it can mean metal. So metal or gold, uh, that's what this, this bushu means. The stroke order is as follows. Here's how you write the, the, the uh, bushu. One, two, three, four, and then you come down five, 
six, seven, and then eight. So you do the six and seven before you put the floor on. And then the, the right side part goes like this, nine, 10, with a little kick on the end, and 11. The Chinese reading is Cho, Cho. The Kun reading, the Japanese reading, is Tsuru, Tsuru. And again, the Ru there is in parentheses, meaning that it will possibly change when we use it in a, in a word. Well, the meaning of this is interesting. It means fishing or allure or ensnare. And we use it in, in Danzanru Jiu-Jitsu this way. A couple of, couple of examples. Here we see Tsuri Komi Goshi. Tsuri, meaning to lift up and pull. Uh, that's a lifting, pulling, hipping, hip throw. And then uh, Tsuri Gani Otoshi. Tsurigani Otoshi, this is an advanced technique. Well, here's a character that may be familiar to many of you. It uses the bushu or radical for tree. This is a tree right here. It looks like a little tree. And let's look at the stroke order of this. First, we draw the tree, which goes one, two, we draw a cross, and then we add some branches here, three and four. So that's our tree. Then we finish the uh, character with the right side, which goes like this. First we draw a pot lid, five, six. Then we draw two boxes, one within another, and we have to do it this way. Seven, eight, but don't close off the big box. First draw the little box on the inside, 9, 10, 11, and now we can close off the big box. And then underneath that we draw another box that has a horizontal line through it. 13, 14, 15, 16. That right there means sun. And then finish the character with 17. The Chinese reading of this is dan or tan. The Japanese reading is mayumi. The meaning is cedar or sandalwood. Uh, it can also mean a, a mayumi tree, which is the spindlewood tree. And of course, the usage of this is danzanryu, the, the sandalwood mountain style. The last character we'll look at is this one, and it uses the radical for ground or earth, this one here, and we see that right here. The stroke order looks like this. Here we have the radical. Let's do that one first. One, two, three. This kind of comes up at a little bit of an angle as opposed to when we write the character itself where, where it's straight across. And then to finish off the character, we go four, a little kick at the end there, five and six. Be careful not to make these too close together. You want to space them evenly. Five and six, like so. The Chinese derivation pronunciation is qi. Oftentimes we say this as g, depending upon the the uh, placement with other sounds in a word. The Japanese reading is doma. The meaning of this character, interestingly, is the same as the the radical. It's earth or ground. So this particular character means earth, and the radical also means earth. Well, a couple of usages we see from Don Zanru. 
here we see the uh, technique that's on one of our lists called Jigoku Otoshi. And G, that's the same as Chi, G. G Goku. Goku means prison. So Earth's prison, this means hell. This means hell right here. And this means drop. So Jigoku Otoshi means a hell drop technique. And then the second example is this one, which is a quote from the scroll. And this is the part that talks about hell under the upraised sword. Here's hell. Uh, here is the sword, Tachi. And this means, this character right here means underneath. So this is um, hell under the upraised sword. The, the grammar sometimes is backwards to what we normally think of in English. But um, that's the part that talks about hell under the upraised sword. I've written several books on Danzanru related topics, um, all the way from, from philosophy to techniques to writing and even historical applications. Um, if you're interested in these books, I hope you will uh, visit Amazon.com and pick up a copy. Well, thank you for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this uh, video, please like, share, and of course, subscribe to it. And I'll see you next time.